Hey, hola, all, welcome back to Soul Mechanics. So, I've had a kind of request, sort of, not really. Uh, people were inquiring in certain areas on YouTube about various topics, and two topics that came to the height were um, the topics of speed and the topics of traveling, like projection works, dream works, and such. Which, again, as I've stated before, I clump everything together in a dream works. I think everything's a dream. I think this is a fucking dream. So, I'm not going to make a, a distinction between what people like to call, like, astral traveling and, uh, and dream works. I think that it's the same thing because I think that you are, in fact, dreaming right now. So, just varying layers of the dream. But you can maneuver between, you know, this body and the phantom body or the perpetual and ephemeral self. And you can also learn to move a lot faster than you do in various senses, as I've stated before. Um, any of the elder traditions will tell you, and, and I'll tell you again and again and again, that you are in fact living in the past. You are quite a ways behind what's actually happening right now. In fact, you cannot experience now at all. Matter itself, as you know it, only emerges in the past. You can only witness it in hindsight. And so, since I need to make these two videos, uh, one on traveling for uh, the new guy Buzz Holiday, I think his name was, in the Remnants program, who he, he posted uh, his very first story on Facebook was a story of, of astral projection and memories of past lives and such. And it was a very cool story, but it gave the impression that he had, in fact, uh, perhaps not really encountered this before, that he was new to the area, that it was something that was perhaps in some ways new to him. And so I wanted to encourage him to share that because a lot of people are afraid to share that sort of, sort of shit. They think it makes them seem crazy, and in ways it does, but I mean, what is crazy? Modern society <laughs> is insanity. The way that people behave nowadays, the way that people think we should be behaving, the way that people tend to go out of their way and attempt to influence each other in certain ways, uh, capitalizing, scheming. I mean, I see people who are in our field, in our community, trying to uh, kind of scam their way uh, through things, making YouTube channels. Uh, this is where the one video came into play about speed, about moving faster, where somebody was doing videos on, like, soul contracts and afterlife negotiations and soulmates and, and shit that we don't really have a, a grasp on, a handle on. Nobody can prove this. You can't provide evidence of this to any effect so it's it's really it's sure it's fun to talk about if a lot of people think that they have the same sorts of experiences or memories great that's wonderful but it's actually damaging to us and where we have this trend now in our community where people say use the term woke and they say that people are, are woke you're not woke man because what <laughs> woke means you're you're not woke because you don't know what the fuck you're doing. You're, you're causing damage to our, our initiative, to our cause, to our purpose, by presenting these values that ultimately, anybody that has a lesser than fully opened mind, and, and if you do have a fully open mind and you just accept this shit as casual, then you're not on par either. Because, frankly, you probably are crazy. You're just, you're, you're imagining your way through life. And in many ways, everybody's imagining their way through life. But, dude, fuck off. Thank you. But, uh... The thing about change is... It does <clears throat> without action. Please. But... And people with lesser than completely open minds, uh, people, you know, skeptical people, sane... Skeptical people who have skeptical minds and skeptical approaches, which we should have as investigators. Uh, they're going to take one look at that shit, that soul contract, afterlife, soulmate nonsense, and they're going to blow it the fuck off. They're going to blow you off. They're going to blow all of us off. We need to take a very sophisticated and, and very careful approach at, at the way that we're presenting ourselves right now. At this stage in the game, we need to be presenting the evidence as we have at hand, and we do have everything that we require to turn the tide readily available. So, as I was saying, 
uh, in an effort to make a perfect example of what I'm talking about where I speak to speed, I'm going to do both of the videos together as one. Which would be one example of how you can move faster, try to multitask, try to get multiple things done at once. I know that it's pressing, I know that it's difficult, and, and something that... For, I, I've been trying to help you guys out with this. You just you don't know that it's happening because again, it's, it's coming back to spot casting. It's coming back to where I'm I'm doing things. I'm presenting mechanics that you guys aren't really aware of yet. But for example, uh, a lot of people, uh, not a lot of people, a few people. We don't have that. You know, we have like I think just under 60 subscribers now. Even but um, in the collective, we do have a. a Span of people. We have a lot of channels aboard now. We have a lot of fucking groups are just everywhere, and there's thousands and thousands of people involved now that I'm dealing with on a, uh, personally, one on one, on a daily basis with thousands of people. So, um, and I'm able to do this because I can move faster, because I am moving faster, because my brain is moving faster, closer to what's happening right now. And, uh, I, as I said, I've been trying to help you guys with this, but there's a few people who've been complaining, like, about the channel. They've been saying, well, for example, uh, the music. I, I play music. I, I, I like to present myself as a musical person. I love music. I want it to be one of my niches, so that's why I'm presenting it on one hand. On the other hand, um, they say that it's, it's difficult because it's kind of distracting. It's tough to pay attention to what I'm saying, and, and with the music playing at the same time, it, it's difficult, isn't it? It's kind of challenging. There's a reason for that. Firstly, you need to be able to pay attention to two things at once. You need to be able to do that. If you cannot do that, welcome to the fucking war. Pay attention. Two, uh, the difficulty involved in this, the challenge involved in it, uh, attenuating a stress level to, to your environment and to the way that you manage things, that's what's going to cause for your brain to speed up. That's what causes for it to pick up speed. Um, when they say that time flies when you're having fun, that's absolutely true. Anybody can attest to that. Now, the, the opposite is also true. If, if, the more difficult, the more challenging, the more oppressive something becomes, the longer it's going to take, the more your brain is going to focus on it, the concentration level is going to rise, and time is literally going to warp and stretch out. And so what you want to be doing is applying the stress to everything that you do. You want to be having fun with it, and I learned this when I was working, when I began working with the initiative. I found this because I was able to... Uh, address a certain routine or impress a certain routine upon myself for every day I'd post that song of the day. There's a reason for that too. The song of the day is hitting certain people. It's casting cues. It, it's leaving cues in the environment and those songs for the most part are going to be triggering mechanisms for the cues that have been left in the past. And when people hear those certain songs or even see the songs, just looking at the song, just seeing the post of it, if they know the song, the brain's going to play it. It's going to play it in the memory, and that song's going to trigger certain emotional factors, certain cues that have been set up in advance, and they, they drop like fucking dominoes, and just the outcomes are tremendous. The, the shock waves is like the butterfly effect. Every single person having the very slightest little difference in their outlook, in their, in their consideration, and their emotional values during the day is going to change the way that they treat people, change the way that they react to things. It's going to determine whether or not they even take action at all, whether or not they even get up out of fucking bed in the morning. These make big fucking differences when they cascade outward and affect multiple people. And if you can see this in advance, if you can move fast enough to see the probabilities and play and play them out for the most part you can keep a pretty solid management of it going it's difficult uh nobody's perfect uh nothing is perfect nobody's going to absolutely you know respond the way that you intend for them to but for the most part uh they do tend to they do tend to fall in line and, and it works out appropriately and we get what we need to get done done except for when members certain members especially directive members don't show up to the fucking party uh when you guys fall out and and disappear for for i don't know how long maybe days maybe weeks for me it seems like fucking years past while you guys are just totally absent we need you guys around man there are reasons for me having recruited you
you need to be in a certain place at a certain time. I'm sorry, I understand if it seems like dictatorial of me, but I'm the director. If you want to be the director, learn how to fucking do it and take action. Secondary factor to speed. When you have an idea, when you have a motivation, an inspiration for something, fucking do it. Like like two lovers, I've set this example before, when two people have a chemistry with each other, they feel like they've got something going, but they're shy about it, they don't want to, nobody wants to make the first move. Make the fucking first move, don't be a dick about it, who gives a shit? If you fail, you fail. There's a reason for it, you'll learn a lesson. If you don't fail, have you ever been in love before? It's, it's, there's nothing that's going to compare to that. You're not going to stick a needle in your arm and get the same effect as true love. Get, wake up, man. Fucking, wake up and be alert and aware and, and alive in your environment. Don't sit in the background and watch your life happen. Step the fuck up, grab the ball and play. So, um, that's all speaking to speed. Now, speaking to, um... Tra traveling, uh, <clears throat> when I spoke in the dropping the ball video, in one of the dropping the ball videos where I was, um, I was a kid and I would have these recurring nightmares where I was trapped in the nightmare and my mom would sit me on the corner of the sink and she would splash water in my face and I couldn't get out of the dream and the dream was of my father tossing the globe to me in this white expansive void and I I'd touch the globe and I could feel the weight of the world and I could feel and hear the screams and terror of everybody in the world like if I dropped that ball, like I could feel the panic of humanity itself that if I dropped that globe, the world would end. And it was literally the weight of the world on my shoulders and every time it got heavier and larger and I would have this dream every night. Just before the dream, I would see the world come, I would be watching like I remember seeing a certain stuffed animal repeatedly. I think it was like a tiger or a bear or something, but it was, it might have been like a tiger, like a, like that lion face. Uh, Nori spoke to this in our last interview, our last crossover. She said that she had seen a stone lion in one of her visions, and um, also Shaman Oaks, another YouTuber, he said he saw the same thing in a DMT trip. So there's something to that that put that into the investigation somewhere. We'll get to that later, but... Um, she said that she also saw the stars, the universe coming in and out, breathing. And that's, that's exactly what it was like. It was like it was breathing, like it was coming and it would move faster and faster and faster until it was just gyrating. Now, years and years later, I picked up with Robert Monroe. I started studying with the Monroe Institute when they, they came into being. And uh, I learned about the techniques they used, specifically the binaural beats and such. And uh, the technologies that they used, rather. Uh, but the techniques involved... This, this Monroe would speak of Robert Monroe. I didn't know him personally. He was, he was dead before I got there. But um, the, the, he would speak in his writings of experiencing this like vibration, uh, kind of like this, this vibrating, gyrating feeling in, in his spine and such, and in his body eventually before he would pop out and he would transmit into the phantom body and, and traverse you know, the astral plane, as they call it. But... I was thinking, could that be the same thing, that gyrating, that breathing, that, 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 it, it felt like myself, my body was, was tipping a balance between here and there, and it was, it was, you know, dropping back and forth, and, and it was reaching this kind of, like, terminal velocity where it would, I would pop into this dream, and I was thinking maybe that's the same thing, and if I can recreate that somehow, maybe I can master this, this transition, this traveling, this astral projection thing. So, during that time, I was training with the Kundalini with Ariel. And uh, I when I got the Kundalini active, and I went through all the years and years of traumatic fucking, you know, my body breaking down and major surgeries and shit and all the troubles that came along with it. And what the fuck are you doing, man? Come on. I went through all the years and years of pain and, and struggles and all that shit, but I finally managed to get a handle on how the impulse works and how to control it manually. And I realized that 
A, that, that vibrating, that gyrating in the spine that he was speaking of, that's the kundalini impulse breaking free. That's, that's getting a handle on it. And then when you actually have it in your body, open and moving, then you experience that full body gyrating, vibrating, dude, commercial after fucking commercial. So, it is the same thing. It is what he was talking about. And it comes back to the kundalini again. So activating that kundalini, opening up the chakras, that's the key to getting it. And that's the key to kind of illuminating the phantom body in the self, feeling the emotional body. And there are certain techniques you can use to get a grip, uh, to grip on that, you know, get a grasp on how that works and practice with it and such. But for the most part, you're going to want to practice opening up those chakras and letting that kundalini loose in order to kind of uh, sort of energize that body and... and like a muscle, strengthen that body so you can get a feel for it and make use of it and eventually get into tactile imaging and such, which is the practice that you're going to use mainly to navigate it and to create objects uh, with it, or of it, rather, that, that you can use. Uh, for spotters out there, travelers out there who are doing this, it's, it's heavily suggested that you do not create figures of animals or people as, as an intended projected body because there's a good chance that they can kind of break loose and wander off on their own. If you, if you program a, a created body, a phantom body, with intelligence, with the idea or the concept of an intelligence behind it, especially a mischievous intelligence like you might give to, say, a cat or something, you know, if you have that idea implanted in it, it will wander off on its own and it'll collect other stray shards and it will become its own personality. And then you're going to run into it later on down the line in DreamWorks. Trust me, this has happened to me several times times I've created, I've created the most villainous monsters in my life, uh, by accident, so, it's heavily suggested that you just create, like, a ball or something, you know, some inanimate object that you can kind of inhabit, that you can project your consciousness into, but we'll get into that with, with the, you know, the actual projection courses and such, which we'll touch on in the soul casting course, um, in any case, so, when you do activate the impulse and when you press it, that that gyrating, that tumbling between the two, that actually that happens. And if you've ever seen the movie Wanted, where uh, they the people press themselves and they raise their heart rate and they get into that heightened, uh, that dilated perception, is what it, that's actually what we're calling it is dilated perception. That's exactly what happens. Whoever made that movie, they had the impulse activated. They knew exactly what they were doing with that. It's a perfect representation. It, the world will close in on you, and you're, you're, you'll get what I like to call magnavision, which, as I said, we're calling it dilated perception. Now, I used to call it magnavision, where it, everything is like right up in your face, and you can see the detailing and everything. And, and every your sentence, your, all of your senses are just heightened to an extreme degree, and you reach what I think of as being like a terminal velocity. And in this terminal velocity, you can very easily create that projected body and pop into it. Now, again, as I've stated before, it's not something I've really delved too deeply into. I haven't done it a whole lot. It's not something that I practiced with DreamWorks a lot early on in my training. So it's not something that I really I got into so heavily now because I'm more interested in here and what's happening here. And now that I've gotten onto the Internet and started working with building the initiative and such, I'm very interested in dealing with people and what's happening here and that world had, doesn't have the same kind of problems that we do it, it can manage itself in fact that world is kind of you could either say it's an outlet or an extension or perhaps even a facade or this world could be considered a facade of that world either way you look at it that world has its own uh schematic to be worked out this world is the one we need to be focused on we need all our people up front fucking center we need the vanguard in play and anybody that is travelers that's super interested in, in psychedelics and traversing the void and everything that's perfectly wonderful we can use your insight we can use your stories because ultimately bottom line just telling your story, just expressing yourself, just realizing this and sharing it as an open truth is going to make the fucking difference. But please, don't share bullshit. Don't fucking try to tell people you know everything about what's going on in the afterlife. You don't. You're lying through your fucking teeth. We know you're lying and it's going to put every fucking buddy There's off. Rushing. Please do not try to tell people rushing. that you have it all fucking covered. Better. You Even don't. Nobody does. 
but we're gonna get we're getting closer and closer the more that we share the actual evidentiary truths that we can we can prove to some extent or another. So uh, I think that's about it. I'm gonna wrap this video up and I'm gonna get on to some other shit I gotta work on. Uh, Black, if you're watching, get your fucking ass in gear, dude. You're pissing me off. I'm sorry. I'm not. You're not pissing me off, but fucking move faster, dude. Come on. Anyways, uh, I gotta work with the directive, and maybe I'll make some more videos later, who knows, we'll see. Love you guys, uh, welcome aboard Buzz, everybody else, the dude on the other channel who was talking about, uh, moving faster, that, that's what I'm talking about, essentially, in a nutshell, there's a lot more to it, but yes, you can stretch out time by impressing a certain degree of difficulty to your to your present situation it's it's like stretching co your concentration like a muscle and this is what we need to be working on guys ultimately is is raising people's attention span the internet is an amazing fantastic tool that we can use but, but one negative side effect it's had is decreasing people's attention span and concentration to functionality totally so we really we need to work on helping people increase their concentration level and their attention span ultimately. So, anyways, thank you guys for watching. Kilo Sly, Terry Uni Siari, Namaste.